In August and September this year, I took a 6,000-mile, five-week road trip around the western half of the United States, stringing together outdoor activities with friends and family. The first leg was from Tucson, Arizona to Durango, Colorado, where I spent a week camping and hiking in the San Juan Mountains, like this spot on the Animas River along the Colorado Trail. The next leg took me to Portland, Oregon, where I met up with family and spent a week entertaining my grandson. From there, I headed due east to Bozeman, Montana, where I met up with a friend and fellow gear reviewer for a week of backpacking up and over the Slough Creek Divide down into Yellowstone National Park. Pictured here is the horse-drawn buggy shuttling guests to and from the Silver Tip Ranch in Yellowstone. From Montana, I headed due east again to Minnesota to meet up for a week of canoeing in the Boundary Waters with friends, where I got a chance to do some paddling in a wee lassie solo canoe. The way the timing worked out, I had four spare days to burn between my Minnesota arrival and the start of our canoe trip, so I decided to spend a couple days backpacking one of my favorite trails in the world, the Superior Hiking Trail. Hey folks, Kurt Pappy coming to you from the Superior Hiking Trail. Most of you know me as a Arizona hiker, Grand Canyon, that kind of stuff. But actually, I uh, cut my teeth uh, on backpacking, learned how to backpack up here on Long Lake Superior in Minnesota on the Superior Hiking Trail. Started about uh, 2005, so uh, had a little uh, section of the trail that I never quite finished while I lived in Minnesota. And I got a couple days to burn, so thought I'd give it a shot. Sure is uh, quite a change from Arizona. Well, this is quite a spot here. Um, I'm about uh, maybe half mile, mile uh, north of the Devil, Devil Track uh, campsite. A little overlook here. That's the uh, Devil Track Canyon down below. Very, very steep. And then uh, that's Lake Superior out there. You probably you might not be able to see it. It may be overexposed. There's so much contrast. This morning sunlight is glinting off the water. But uh, gorgeous spot. This is the Devil Track River itself. Uh, this little cascade is right next to the campsite. The campsite is just to the left of the frame here. And I spend a wonderful afternoon reading a book uh, along the river here. This is... Uh, Pretty typical Superior Trail, green tunnel, lots of lichens growing on the pine trees, kind of a muddy treadway, overcast skies, windy, lots of ferns, lots of birch trees. Every once in a while you break into a clearing get out of the tunnel but you still can't see around you anywhere that's why these uh, overlooks where you can see Lake Superior are so great good morning it's Wednesday morning and I am just north of the Woods Creek campsite be arriving at the Durfee Creek campsite in a little while and the Superior Trail certainly follows Lake Superior uh, the North Shore uh, but you don't often get to see the lake. And I just popped into this little meadow here. I'm not sure if it has a name or not. But uh, what a glorious morning. We had some uh, pretty nasty thunderstorms last night. Big boomers, lots of rain. Pretty wet this morning. I had to pack away my tarp still wet. But uh, it's about uh, 10, 30, 11 o'clock here on the Superior Hiking Trail. And uh, it is absolutely glorious this morning. I mean, just look at that sunshine. A couple clouds. We're supposed to have rain again tonight, but uh, I don't know. I'm pretty dubious about that. It looks awfully clear. But the weather up here can change on a moment's notice. So uh, famous last words. But uh, beautiful spot here on a gorgeous morning on the Superior Trail. One of the first things I learned on the Superior Trail 15 years ago was it consists of rocks, roots, and ruts. Not an easy treadway. This is what the 
roots look like. There's sections of the trail like this that are just covered with tree roots. They kind of come and go here, but oh, they're uh, kind of interesting to pick your way through. They're uh, a little slippery when they're wet, which makes the footing interesting. Speaking of slippery, these little uh, foot bridges are terribly slippery when they're wet and you've got muddy soles of your shoes. So uh, still hiking through the green tunnel here. So one of the delights of the Superior Trail are all the streams and creeks. You really don't have to carry more than about a liter of water. So uh, this is Woods Creek. I just passed the Woods Creek campsite, but uh, this is kind of nice because the creek runs literally right along the trail here. With my feet, there's the creek. So very easy to uh, replenish your water, but very, uh, the trail doesn't run along a lot of creeks. Uh, it goes up and down some of the ravines, um, but uh, really nice setting here. So one of the things you'll notice um, here in Woods Creek is the water is kind of the color of weak tea. And those are tannins. They're uh, completely harmless. And uh, they come from all the roots and so on that, uh, that the stream flows through. So uh, it is kind of like uh, drinking weak tea, I guess, from a tannic acid perspective. But uh, nothing to be concerned about, although eventually uh, it does seem to clog up uh, typical, if you have like a paper type filter, uh, catadine or something like that, uh, it eventually uh, will clog up the filter with all the tannins. I have to say I admire this tree for its tenacity. It starts growing right out of the bank here and then covered with lichens and all kinds of crazy stuff. Must have had an accident at some point here because a couple main branches got broken off. And then this big main branch grows up higher and higher, occupying the prime space over the river. Plenty of light, plenty of water, plenty of nutrients. Life is good. So one of the things that's a little surprising on this trip is how many thimbleberries there are growing along the trail now. There always were some, but uh, I just don't recall them being quite this thick. But uh, then again, I, I haven't done this section of the trail before. This was uh, uh, just a short segment that I missed doing back when I lived here in uh, 2005 through 2009. But uh, thimbleberries everywhere. You can recognize them by these monster leaves here. The, uh, the berries are long since passed, um, but uh, they are just profuse in here. I mean, there's other berries as well. I've seen raspberries and things like that, but the thimble berries are just thick in here, as are the, the mushrooms. The, uh, the mushrooms are really pretty this year. Well, it's not unusual to see mushrooms along the Superior Trail, uh, but these are really exceptional. Look at those guys. They almost look edible. And maybe they are, but uh, I wouldn't have a clue. So this, uh, this tree is definitely going. Yeah, it's dead. So uh, the rotting is uh, certainly allowing some good fungi growth. So the sun came out, so I thought I'd uh, actually show you what a typical Superior Hiking Trail campsite looks like. Uh, they all, they're all signed like this with the with the entrance. This one happens to be a multi-group site. 
<clears throat> which means it's got uh, oh, six or eight tent pads where, uh, where multiple, obviously multiple groups can camp. Uh, there's often a little bit of a trail that leads into the campsite. They've tried to uh, position the campsites just off the trail so there's a little bit of privacy and uh, a little bit of quiet, but uh, they're only uh, a few steps away. And this is the, uh, the center area. There's normally a C-shaped or an L-shaped bench like this. Uh, the L or the C-shape gives it uh, support so it doesn't tip over. And then there's a fire ring in the middle. And then a few tent pads around the outside here. Um, you can see these, uh, these campsites get used a fair amount. And uh, so the ground is uh, pretty bare. There's no, uh, no grass where these particular campsites are. And now we're going to take a little detour down a trail to where I'm camped. I'm kind of camped up a little bit above the main campsite. And uh, that gives me a little bit more privacy in case somebody arrives in the middle of the night um, or late in the, in the day. Uh, they don't have to worry about disturbing me. Plus, if I want to uh, sit and read or eat by myself, I'm kind of off by myself here. There's my hammock. Fairly long hang in this particular case. These, uh, these two birch trees are fairly far apart. There's my uh, ursac. And you can see this uh, pad is fairly well used but uh, not quite as much as the others because it's a little more remote, so it has a little bit of grass growing in it. Uh, but it's nice and large, accommodates my, my hammock well. So let's go back down the trail here. Boy, the asters are everywhere this year. We had asters in Colorado, asters in Montana, Wyoming and here in, uh, in Minnesota. So good year for purple asters, or maybe it's just good time. Good timing, you can see some more here. And uh, there's all kinds of ferns in here. This is very, very wet climate in this area. So uh, very green, ferns do well. and all kinds of uh, berries. And now we're headed to the most important part of the campsite, which is the latrine. And you gotta be very careful not to put trash in there because uh, they have to clean the trash out, which is very expensive, and uh, not, a, not a pleasant task to have to do that. So the latrines are set back maybe 100 feet or so from the campsite. And uh, that's all it is right there. A, uh, a place to sit on top of some boards over a hole. And that way it can be moved periodically um, when, uh, when needed. Uh, some of them actually have a, a cover on the toilet seat, but I think they must have discontinued those. I haven't, uh, haven't seen any of those on this hike, but uh, there it is. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little peek at the Superior Hiking Trail. If you found this video useful, please click like or subscribe below or leave me a comment. I love to get comments from viewers. Thanks again.